this is number three, solving equations with the x squared in there. So um, for part A and B, we have x squared. Part C is x to the third. So for part A, we have x squared equals 81. So remember, that's asking what number times itself, okay, so x is a number times itself, is equal to 81. So you can just know this, or uh, remember, when we're actually solving this, what we do to one side, you do to the other. So to get rid of that square, we're going to square root. So we're asking ourselves, all right, on the left side, what number times itself is x squared? And that's just x, because x times x is equal to x squared. And that's equal to the square root of 81, we know is what number times itself gives you 81, is 9. However, you have to remember in this situation that it could be a positive 9 or a negative 9. So we have that plus or minus sign. So you can write 9 and comma negative 9, or you can write that shortcut. It's called a plus or minus sign, and then the 9. So that means they mean the same thing. So why do we have two answers? Well, it's because we're asking what number squared is 81. If I just wrote on the paper square root of 81, that's when you would just say the positive square root because the square root was already written. Okay, the square root's already there, so I'm just asking for the principal root or the positive root of the square root of 81. Over here, I'm asking what number squared is 81. And if we were to justify our answer or give reason, we could show that it works because 9 times 9 is equal to 81. And then you could also show that negative 9 times negative 1, 9 is also equal to positive 81. So you could show that that changes to a positive and a positive and is equal to positive 81. That's how you could prove your answer is correct. So your final answer is x equals plus or minus 9. Now let's do an example with a fraction. So with a fraction, we have x squared equals 9 over 49. It's going to be the same thing. The only difference is, since we're square rooting a fraction, our answer is also going to be a fraction. So we're looking for what number times itself is equal to 9 over 49. So really, we're looking for some fraction times itself to be equal to 9 over 49. So we know that the numerator times the numerator will give us 9. Okay, numerator times numerator will give us 9. And then the denominator times itself will give us 49. So these, the numerator and the denominator, have nothing to do with each other. So when we're looking to solve this by square rooting each side, we know that the square root of x squared is just x. And then since the numerator and denominator don't affect each other here, we're actually looking for the square root of 9 over the square root of 49. So again, down here, what number times itself is 9? So that's the square root of 9. And then in the denominator, times itself gives you 49. So what's the square root of 49? And we know that the square root of 9 is 3, and the square root of 49 is 7. And we can prove that down here that it works. 3 times 3 gives us a 9, and 7 times 7 gives us a 49. So our answer is 3 over 7, or 3 sevenths. Just like part A, we do have the positive and negative answer. So even with fractions, it's the positive and negative answer. Make sure you do not write it like this, negative 3 over negative 7. That would be two negatives, so those would actually turn into positive. So you just make the whole thing negative or strictly the numerator or denominator. So do not write it as uh, two negatives, okay? So two negatives is uh, not okay. So plus or minus 3 sevenths. So you can also write it as 3 sevenths comma negative 3 sevenths. So that will be our final answer. Again, to justify your solution, you can say, okay, here's my proof that 3 sevenths is an answer. When you multiply fractions, we multiply across. So 3 times 3 will give us that 9. And then 7 times 7 will give us 49. So there's proof for that one. We can also prove with a negative, so negative 3 sevenths times negative 3 sevenths. Negative 3, uh, well, we can just treat the negatives separately or with the 3. So I know that a negative and negative becomes a positive, and then we have the same thing as we did before. 3 times 3 gives us a 9, 
and 7 times 7 gives us 49. So it equals a positive 9 49 So this is our justification that our problem is correct. And that's it for part number three, parts A and B.